Fantastic. Um, I know I've got some questions written down, but I'm going to wait on those questions um, until we have a chance to dig into it ourselves. We have an activity sheet, and you should have all gotten an invitation for the Active Teaching Lab course, um, where you can go in and create modules and create pages and play around with the syllabus tool. Um, feel free to add some organizational elements to that Active Teaching Lab site. It's kind of it's less organized than I would want it to be, but I'm not making it any more organized. So mm -hmm. it's up to you to make it organized and make it beautiful. Um, just don't delete anything that's on there because Julie's also working on it. Um, so yeah, get in, dig in, and talk amongst yourselves and ask me questions, ask the right question. We'll be around for this. Um, and we'll meet back in a few minutes and um, have some better questions. Is that good? How many people use the modules and pages and discussions and they just the modules? So you've got a module, module one for day one or whatever Weeks, this week. Yeah, just Every week is a different module. Different base there right now. All right, very good. It's a great way to start. Yeah. How many people um, love the syllabus tool, the way that it automatically populates stuff? Anybody not like that? Wait. On the fence, okay. So this is the question. How, if it has a date, a due date, it automatically populates. I believe that is correct. But how do you get like a lecture to show up on time? Um, you can add a due date to record the lecture. Oh, yeah. Not right answer anyone? Anyone know? Well, what we ended up doing is actually, I would go into the calendar interface, okay. and I'd click on the day that I knew the lecture was going to happen, and create an event, right, the lecture, and then I link to the page that described where the module and sort of described the lecture. Okay. So it, it was a little more sort of work of linking things together, yeah. but once you do that, things look like they're all the same on a calendar. Lectures, discussions, and assignments seem like they're all a blob on my calendar, yes. and they all propagate to the, the syllabus. I can, sh I can show how I did that. Oh, awesome. I'm just going to try to figure out the stuff, then you already have Yeah, and if there is a way to like take, so in other words, the, the question for my, the way I would interpret that question is, so I have lecture number one, right, uh, in my module, and different different bits of information I want associated with that lecture, so I'm, you know, stacking them under that module, and that's very nice, it's sort of a like file folder organization. But I want this lecture to be generic enough so that the next semester when I do this, I can just right. have all that stuff translated and it's not going to be tied to a particular date or where I can easily change the date. And when I look into the editing of the module, there's prerequisites and requirements and things like that, but I don't, and there's a lock until, so there's ways of adding some date information, but that's not really what I'm looking for, right? So maybe there's a way to do this that I'm, I'm missing. But what I did instead was, I started over here from the calendar, and I said, well, so I said, look, I'll, I'll make up a fake lecture here. So if I'm going to have a lecture on Friday of uh, this, I'm going to have a lecture next Friday, so Friday, February 24th. So I click there, I just click on it, and it says, do you want to add a new event? And I would I would just put in, you know, oops, sorry. Ah. Click on it again, edit it. I uh, give it a title, 
give it a location, make sure the date and time are correct so it shows up for students. So I'm, I'm doing this all by hand for each single lecture and each single discussion. But um, then I go down to more options. And this is where the magic happens. In more options, I get to just add some free text. Okay. And so what I do here is I add a link. And uh, oh boy, here's the links from all my other stuff. There's a nice thing down here that shows how you can link in from your modules. And depending on the size of your screen, that might be on the right hand side. Yeah. Right. Let's see if I can if I make it smaller. If, if I make the text smaller, it pops over here on the right. So here's my module for lecture number one, right? That's that, that whole section of all that stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop that over there. Uh, click, click. There it goes. And it pops right in. And like, that's all I do. So if I save this live right now, it would sit on the calendar. And then you'd see the calendar event. If you click on the calendar event, you see this link. And I'm hoping the students <laughs> take that next step and click the link. But that takes them back to that module page, right at that where that module is. But I mean, that's, that's, that's a big point, right? I, I had to do all that by hand for each lecture and each one of uh, it's nine times how many t discussion sections? 27 discussions, right? I had to, I had to do that. Like, it's, I sat down for an hour and went through it and I did it. Once that was done, though, I knew that every student's calendar is going to represent reality. Um, and that's going to automatically flow to the syllabus. So because Canvas allows, like, once you pin a date to it, it'll propagate. It felt like it was worth my time to do that, honestly. So when I, the last thing I'd say is when I shift this class for next fall, right, I'm going to add basket to throw all this stuff in. It's going to leave those calendar things in the new class from the old day, and I theoretically I could just drag those around. I could move the calendar entries, right, um, drag them six months into the future and let them sit and they would work, which is kind of a nice thing. It's, it's kind of a clunky way of doing it, but like you can't do it looks like if you scroll down, there's a repeat box as well. Uh, let's see, what was that? Um, uh, under the address? Uh, I have a repeat box. Oh, it might be, um, I might be back on the previous screen before you get to this, I'm not sure. Um, one thing that we did end up doing is, for the discussion sections, I clicked this box, it says use a different date for each section, and that automatically gives me Boxes to fill in for all, again, all of my, uh, I only, it looks like that goes up to 310, but I have one of the sections just canceled. So I have nine discussion sections. So I set, and this is where by hand, right. I had to set a separate date and time for each one of those. A little tedious, but I put on some music and I did it. And <laughs> it was worth it. Uh, if there was an automatic way, so wish list, there's an automatic way for the registrar information of the date and time and location of all discussion sections to all oh, to flow in there, oh my god, that would be, that would be amazing. But um, uh, doing it by hand, I think, is worth it. So if I back out of this, let's see, I have this weird thing in the calendar. No, it didn't. Okay. Um, Boy, it seems like trying to drag each one of those forward six months was going to be more of a pain in the butt than <coughs> going back to that page and just changing the dates. Yeah, there's other ways of looking at the calendar, too. Like, you can look at the calendar as, uh, I'm going to do an agenda mode here. Instead of looking at the whole month, Visual. You can sort of look at it like this, and uh, I guess I'm not sure. It doesn't look like you can oops, yeah, move things around to do that. But it sort of gives you a syllabus view. I think. I mean, I think you're right. It's. It's. I ended up just entering the dates in the gap, right, and going through. Um, so I'm. I'm still looking for a you know, easier way of doing that. I guess. If you have a spring class, that'd be easy enough because it'd be close to the right week. It might not be on the right day anymore because it's Friday or Tuesday or whatever. But so the syllabus, when I go to the syllabus list and it's picking up all the stuff in order, all those discussion sections, what it's picking up, you can see the little icon here. It's a little tiny calendar icon. It's picking up the calendar entry as the thing. It's not picking up the module. And, and again, if I click in on that calendar entry, then it sends me to actually sending me to the calendar to find that. It looks like there's the agenda list up there. That's kind of figuring out. Okay. So it's, it's sending me to the place. And then I'd have to like click into it here and then click into module. Okay. So you know, there's a little bit of, I don't know, two-step indexing into it like that. But at least everything's sort of findable.
Did anybody solve that problem in your own work? <clears throat> it looks like you can shift dates or remove dates, but it's not going to be as fine-grained. Yeah. Like that, so. But it should at least launch them into the correct semester. Yeah, that's true. I think when you when you uh, reload the course right from a previous semester, it lets you like time shift the whole thing. I haven't tried that. That's a really good idea. It would get like you said, if it gets it close enough, then I, you could sort of adjust by hand. Kevin. Well, this is just kind of a a thought that Canvas wants to. Um, associate things really logically. And so another way of handling it is to have an assignment associated with lecture, if that's appropriate. So maybe it's a um, you know summary of what they thought about lecture. That has a deadline in the calendar that would then be populated into the syllabus. Um, just like, it's weird to maybe conflate that if it's not necessary, but it's another way of doing it. And then one of the Canvas resources from um, their conference just this last year, uh, someone presented about how to change all of your dates from one page. And it's basically using the Open API and Google Sheets. You call the uh, course, mm -hmm. and then you can use Google Sheets with a calendar picker, and you can use the logic if you're kind of a power user in spreadsheets, and just do it. And I was very skeptical that this would work, but I got it to work. And it's, it's really neat. And, um, and uh, you know, we could maybe, you know, link that, that informational session. David has all kinds of time for you guys to do, to take him for an hour or whatever. <laughs> He'll happy to show you through. Yeah. It's kind of a power, power thing, but um, clearly there's, there's a need for efficiency when dealing with dates. The hardest thing for me was the discussion sections. Again, if you have a class that's just a uh, no discussion section class, you've got maybe two, three times a week for 15 weeks to enter. I think you know plowing through that seems reasonable. But there's you know, there's another aspect of it too, and and you know even if I had the tool you're describing, and if it was like right there and ready, I. Be a little worried about it, just because the timing is like the most important thing, right? You get the timing wrong, and students are in the wrong building on the wrong day at the wrong time, and you lost them for that whole week, right? And going through and kind of the ritual of the new semester and pinning everything back to the schedule by hand, I think that actually, there's actually some value to that, even though it's kind of tedious, because uh, I, I notice things, right? I notice, oh, you know. I remember the flow didn't work so well last semester on this. Maybe this is the time to change that. Or I remember, oh, geez, I'm going to be out of town this week. I just put this on the calendar. Now I've got to rethink something, or, or whatever it might be. You know what I mean? Um, even if there's one or two glitches that you that you catch just by doing that, it's it's not it's not bad sometimes. I think to have a, a sort of moment of having to go through brute force and just dot all the eyes on, on your course. A preview of the semester for yourself, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. But, but again, if the discussion section stuff was a little more automatic, that I, I'd go for that. Does anyone have other strategies for guiding students? Okay, that was the wrong question. <laughs> what are your other strategies for guiding students? Because you all have them, James. Look, and, and I mean, this may seem transparent on the face of it, but um, what I actually did when I taught in Canvas the first time is I made what I call the technology video, where I literally do screencast and I walk the students through, here's how I have the course set up, and here's how you access various things. You know, it's a five minute video, but it helps set expectations because I think particularly at this point, enough students have used Canvas and had it, different professors use it different ways, that it's always helpful to be like, and this is how I'm using it. Yeah. That's especially, as you say, there's, well, with Canvas, you could use syllabus, you could use the modules, you could have them just pop through the different files and assignments on their own, or the pages on their own. There are lots of ways, and the professors that they're having are using all of these different ways. So that idea of, like, this is what to expect in my class is probably of great relief and use for them. One thing we inevitably end up doing is we will it's a class with a lot of people and a lot going on. So Canvas isn't the only thing we end up using. We end up using course lists as well, like the old-fashioned course lists that we you know, 
by hand to make sure that those advisors that are plugged into sections are plugged in the course list because they're not registered for the course. We, we make sure we have email lists that reach everybody too, and our TAs send updates as well. Like, remember, next week you're in lecture, not discussion, right? So if there is a level of redundancy that no matter how wonderful Canvas would be, we sort of also go outside of that a little bit. And I've started to try to use the announcements feature in Canvas for some of that, but I don't feel comfortable relying on that entirely because, so Canvas has this announcements section where you can post nice course announcements and you'll see we have a couple of uh, announcements posted. Here's one, reminder for tomorrow, bring a question to lecture, right? This was sent out the day before lecture, sent out by posting an announcement here, so I knew there'd be two ways students might see this. One, if they're visiting the website because they're so engaged in the course, <laughs> uh, and the other one is if they didn't unselect turn off my announcements in their Canvas Student Center thing, right? If they had ignored that or didn't realize they could turn off that email, they're going to get that in their email. Which is something I didn't know actually the first time I used Canvas. I was posting all kinds of great announcements thinking, oh, the only way they'll see these is if they go to the course. And students were getting spammed by my, my announcements. So it's it's kind of tricky, right? I mean, I want, a, I want an integrated way of through Canvas, getting out to students and hitting their email, but announcements kind of doesn't quite solve either problem.